ado, I want to introduce our special guest star, Mr. Todd Chun. Uh, Todd is, uh, having Todd here is really special to me because Todd probably doesn't re remember this, but he and I worked on my first wholesale deal together. I had the uh, deal and Todd had the uh, buyer. Uh, I had it under contract for $16,000. Todd got his buyer to pay uh, $20,000 for the, for the uh, well, a uh, wholesale fee of four thousand. So Todd and I split for four thousand dollars, and that's my way of saying Todd is an excellent person to partner with. In case any of you have wholesale deals and you need buyers, because so Todd probably has the most expensive buyer list of all the wholesalers here in the metropolitan area. But at any rate, I don't want to steal too much more of Todd's thunder. Without further ado, Mr. Todd Chuck. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Eddie. Appreciate it. That program, what's that program called? E yeah, ERC. ERC. Yeah. yeah. The great thing about that program, and correct, correct me if I'm wrong, it is not like the PPP loan program. This is the opposite. It's a grant. Correct. They don't have to pay it back. And it really comes, they got trillions of dollars, and it actually um, comes from the employer, the owner. He pays employee tax, so it comes out of that, that money. So, yeah, great opportunity. I talked to someone about that today, and he already took advantage of it. So it's, it's really a great program. But I appreciate everyone for coming. I appreciate everyone online watching. Thank you so much. Um, I want to tell you just a little bit about my story and um, tell you a little tips here today and, and answer any questions anyone might have. Um, you know, I started in real estate right out of the Marine Corps, knocking on doors, canvassing back in 2000, 1999, I, I believe it was. Um, I started knocking on doors in the city of Detroit, just knocking, canvassing, home improvement. That's what I started at. I was selling home improvement. I worked for a company that sold the home improvement. I actually loved it. It was fun. My job was to get inside the house any way I can. Summertime, wintertime, cold. I just knocked on the door, whispered, whistled. And when they cracked that door, I said, okay, if I step in, and I would just walk, push my way through. And then I would take off my boots, sit on their couch, and say, come and sit down with me. And then I would try to sell some home improvement or get, get them to get an estimate from the guy that I worked for. And um, really good experience, you know, you get out of your comfort, comfort zone, you're door knocking, people are looking at you like, who's this Jehovah Witness, right, or whatever. They didn't know what I was doing. So that was a lot of fun. And then from there, um, I went into the mortgage business, and I was running calls in the city of Detroit, refinancing houses um, before the crash. And that's where I learned the streets of Detroit. I learned the zip codes. I actually grew up in Brightmore. Has anyone heard of Brightmore before? So you know, beautiful neighborhood, right? <laughs> I wholesale in Brightmore still. I, I got a handful of deals um, that I've done in Brightmore. It's tough. You got to get them cheaper, and you sell them cheaper. You know, there's a select few people that like cheap houses because you can rent them and make a good cash flow, right? ROI. Um, anyways, out of the mortgage business. I was there and then um, I went up the ladder and then the mortgage crash started doing reverse mortgages. I became a licensed real estate agent in um, 2012 and um, that was and then we started buying at the foreclosure auctions. We were buying rent. We were doing short sales after the crash then we started buying at the foreclosure auction and again I worked for a company and did all this you know I did not know anything about wholesaling, never heard of it. I didn't know there was investors, groups. I had no idea. I, didn't, I thought we were the smartest people. We were the only ones that were buying houses and, and had a system and everything else. Little did I know it was the total opposite. How did I learn about wholesaling or start? I heard a radio commercial, Than Merrill. Have you ever heard that commercial? Anyone heard of him? Than Merrill, yeah, I guess he played football for the, in the pros. He went to Stanford. Anyways, he, he did, um, he was probably on one of the first TV shows, Flip That House or something like that. Anyways, he was running a radio commercial saying, I'm coming to Detroit and come see me. I'll teach you how to flip houses. And I heard this commercial, heard this commercial, heard this commercial. So Friday, it was a, 
I went out there, and um, best thing I ever did. Um, they get you to spend the two hundred dollars to come to their weekend weekend class. It was a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I went there, and they talked about wholesaling. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. That doesn't sound right. It sounds illegal, right? It just doesn't seem right. How can you, you know, get a deal under contract and just turn it over to this person to buy it for more and make money? I couldn't believe it. But he did tell, he told me, he told everyone to read a book. And I'm not a reader, um, never was. But now I listen to podcasts, I listen to books. And I do read a little bit, but it's all educational, entrepreneur type books. But Outwitting the Devil, that was, you could get it free online. You could hear it on YouTube. I think they have it free. It really was a good book. Napoleon Hill, he has a few good books. Um, I could go on days and tell you about 100 books, but that was a, my first one that I ever listened to. I listened to it that Friday night before the next day of Than Merrill, right? So, and then he said, go to meetups. I'm like, meetups? And he told us where to find meetups. I never even heard of them before. And so I looked up some local meetups and I started going. Long story short, they tried to get you to pay for a $30,000 at the time. This was seven years ago. $30,000 um, program, right? Mentoring program where they teach you how to flip houses. And that, I mean, it looks great. They're great salespeople, if you've ever been to one of those. I mean, I almost went back there, right? I didn't, but I almost did. And I know a lot of people that did. And I'm not saying it's wrong to do that. Sometimes you need that kick in the butt. But anyways, I, that's where I learned about wholesaling. So I worked for a job for 22, 23 years. I was the vice president. And I went to this conference in October and by January 1st, I went to my first meetup, met, a, met someone there, and he said, like, you need to be on your own, you need to be doing this and that and this. I ended up writing this guy a $2,500 check to him that says, if I don't quit my job by January 1st, in three more months, he could cash the check. I agree to that. He tricked me big time, right? tricked me into that. I don't think I told my wife about it. I probably didn't have $2,500 barely in the bank. And that day came and um, I thought of a few things. One, do I lie and say I quit my job? No, I'm not going to do that. Two, do I just say, you know, because you always, in my mind, I was like, man, this is just not the right time. You know, it's winter time. Give me a few months and I'll quit my job. And then you know what's going to happen in a few months? And I'm not telling anyone to quit their job. Trust me. This is not what I'm saying. This is what I had to do. And then, you know, and then a few months goes by and then you're going to make up another excuse. That's the type of person I was. So, uh, and, I, or I quit my job. So, called my boss up because he happened to be out of town. He was supposed to be back in town January 1st. And he went, he was in, out of town. Supposed to fly back, but there's weather problems, you know. So he didn't get back. So I just called him up and I told him that today's my last day. Couldn't, I'm sure he couldn't believe it. I was there 23 years, ran the company, everything else. It was out of the blue. I didn't give a two-week notice because I'm the type of guy, you give a two-week notice, they're not going to give you a two-week notice if they fire you, right? <laughs> 100%. They're not going to give you a two-week notice. And I knew if I would have gave a notice they would have let me go right then and there. So that I just knew, because I was the vice president, how many people did I fire through the crash and everything else? It, it's part of business. Yeah, or, or let people go because we you know, did something out, you know, going a different direction or we're changing things up. So I knew how, how it worked. So I quit my job and now what? I burnt the bridge. Really had no savings. No, no big savings, a family, two kid, young kids, a wife, a big, a big house, and a big payment comes with a big house, but I figured I could do this, and then I just started, and that's six years ago. January 1st of the, coming up will be my six years of wholesaling, 
And right about now is six years of knowing what wholesaling was, right? So I started wholesaling like crazy, trying to, trying to wholesale, talking to people, making phone calls, going to these meetups, meeting the right people, figuring out buyers, getting my name out there, and then um, got with a partner, and we started, we started a property management company. At, at that time, we had over 100 houses we were managing. I was doing the wholesaling side, and then we started fixing and flipping houses in the city of Detroit. And at one time, at our highest peak, we probably had 12 flips going on. Now, this is probably five, um, five years ago. It was, you could, I mean, the market was still good. You could get houses cheap fix them up nice, and sell them pretty quickly. So it was a good business. And we, we, we ended up going our separate ways. Um, I really wanted to be on my own at the time. We had some rental properties, and it was just getting too big, doing too many flips and doing, trying to do everything, right? So I wanted to slim down, um, had a bunch of rentals, so we liquidated. He got a bunch of them. And then got back to just wholesaling, okay? And that's, that's really what I love. Why do I love wholesaling? It used to be I just loved getting that purchase agreement, that contract. Love getting it under contract. It really is not about the closings because it's going to, everything's going to close eventually, hopefully. Not everything. You get title issues and get some problems like that. But right now, I could honestly say, why do I like wholesaling? is because I like helping people. And I know it sounds cliche, or, but really trying to solve that problem. Because if they didn't have a problem, they wouldn't be talking to me trying to sell, wholesale their house or solve their problem. They got to have a problem. So what, um, first of all, has, does, is anyone wholesaling currently right now in this room? Okay. So we had one, two, three. Did you raise your hand? Kind of? A little bit? All right. And, um, all right, perfect. So we got a lot of people. How many want to wholesale? Everyone? Maybe? A little bit? Okay. So please, if you guys have any questions as I'm talking, I know some people say wait to the end. Just raise your hand, get my attention, and when I get a chance, I'll come to you so we don't forget it. Yes, sir. Just clear to everybody, just in case anybody that doesn't really know what wholesaling is, can you go with thoroughly just what exactly? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So his question was, just um, in case someone doesn't understand what wholesaling is, I'll tell you my definition of wholesaling. Okay, that's a great question since there's a lot of people in here that might that, that is not wholesaling. So wholesaling is, in my mind, is. Um, you are finding a motivated seller, okay, and you, you're helping them solve their problem. The motivation, when I say motivated, divorce, um, death in the family, behind on payments, pre-foreclosure, in foreclosure, that's my specialty, um, a beat up house, back on taxes, um, tired landlords, what that means is a... They just been. They just can't take the tenants. They think can't take fixing up the houses. You know, the landlord game is another business. It's tricky. You know, it's not a quick. You know, it sounds good, but you got to replace a the roof. There goes your profit for that whole year, maybe two. Right? Depends. So yeah, come on in. And um, so you're finding someone that's motivated to sell quickly, and you you work out. You get it at a deep discount, you, and you get it on a purchase agreement. In that purchase agreement, it says you can assign the purchase agreement, okay? In the state of Michigan, Mark always tells me, it doesn't have to say you can assign it to assign in the state of Michigan, but I want to be, I want to make sure I disclose it, that they know I'm assigning the property. And I'll give you some tips about that, because you don't want to just say, I'm going to assign and wholesale your property. You're not going to get any deals on the contract if you do it that way, okay? But you, you don't want to actually say, I'm going to be the buyer and I'm going to close this deal because that's not true either. In some cases, it might be true. So you, get a, you find a motivated seller, 
you get it under contract at a deep discount and then you find a buyer and you assign it to the buyer at a higher price okay and then you close the deal there, there it is paper no money out of my pocket I don't put earnest money deposits down um, the contract is good enough for a deposit what do they call that wording mark mark when you have a contract instead of an earnest money deposit it's the consideration on a purchase agreement is the sales price yes so you don't need a deposit yeah it's legal in the state of michigan yeah so the the consi consideration yeah so the purchase agreement everyone thinks you got to put a dollar down ten dollars down hundred dollars down do you guys do earnest money deposits no, you don't have to. The purchase agreement is consideration, okay? In my purchase agreement, there nowhere does it state that the earnest money deposit. If you don't put it in there, they won't question it. Because you're dealing with someone that has it that is a don't wanter. They want out of a situation, you know. They don't want the house. So that that that's that's so I don't put down because I always tell if it ever comes up, if it's a sweet, sweet deal. You're going to put an earnest money deposit down if you have to. If you know you could turn that thing fast and make a quick, some quick money, yeah, or, or fast money, you got a buyer and not, put an earnest money down. I mean, there's deals that I put 10 grand down, 20 grand down, but 99% of the time I put zero down and then never, never have a problem. Okay? And um, so that, there it is. So wholesaling. You get a, you find a motivated seller, you get it under contract, and you assign it for more money, and you make the in-between. Yes? What is the retirement tax? You said most of the time you don't put any money down, but you just mentioned in other situations, you might put 10000 20000 Yeah. What is the difference that determines whether you put the money down or whether you do not put the money down? Great question. So if I go into Rosedale Park, you, you know where Rosedale Park is, right? Beautiful area. And I got a buyer that says they'll sell it to me for forty thousand dollars, and I know I could sell it for eighty tomorrow. I'm gonna give them an earnest money deposit, right? That that means it's a no-brainer because if I don't find a buyer, I'm gonna buy it myself, or I'm gonna call somebody who has money, and we're gonna partner together. So that's just like a I just know it's that great of a deal. There's zero chance I could lose. Now, if I have, on a second note, if I have a fixer-upper house, that's a frame house, two-bedroom with a basement, and the tenants aren't paying rent, or, or no, better yet, someone's squatting in the house, I'm not going to put five or ten grand down on that one and say I'm going to buy it, or I got investors that are going to buy it, because it's not, I might lose, that's the likelihood, that's going to be a tough deal to turn, all right, or, or to, to find a buyer. Not saying I'm not, you know. Great question. Does, does that answer your question? Does, does that make sense? Okay. Yes. How do you find the sellers? And my father passed away a few years ago. He has a rental property, and people, I guess, after I had to go through probate, people were calling me left and right. Yeah, because it's they advertise it on the legal. There's all there's ways to get probate lists okay. of people that passed away. And it's advertised in the legal newspaper, and people are specialties. I work a little probates, not many, but people are special. Have that's what they do. So they get the list, and they talk to different attorneys and things like that. And they found out your father passed. They found out he had a property he's living in. He probably had some rentals, and they that's how they reached out. How do you find your sellers? How do I find my sellers? Um, I get lists, pre foreclosures, foreclosures, okay. driving for dollars, okay. you know, word of mouth, things like that. There's all, there's all, we got a list, we had a bunch of Zooms where there's a list of 20 different ways to find in sellers. Good question. All right. So, so that's, that, does it, does it make sense? Everyone understand what wholesaling is? Okay, great. Yeah, for sure. Does everyone have access to the list that you have, or is it okay? Yeah, that's just being out there, okay. finding the better list. There's lists you can buy or get from PropStream is a is a um, source where you can buy lists or or, or get, 
you know, you have a subscription and you get lists, but you always want to get the best. Yeah, I want to be, I want to get a better list than you. That's that I get first before it comes out to everyone else. So, and yes. Yeah, that, that's a wonderful question. Yes, I think so. You don't have to have it, but it's so easy to get a real estate license in the state of Michigan. It's a 40-hour class. It might take someone one time to pass the test. It might say, take someone to 10 times. It doesn't matter. I promise you, if you're brand new and it took you 10, or if you're brand new and it took you at one, you're going to know the same. You know, someone, you know, I know someone close to me that took them seven times. I did it the first time, but I was in the mortgage business. I knew all this stuff, right? Kind of, you know, and I'm not a good test taker. So, but it's only 40 hours to take the class. And I believe in the state of Michigan, they're going to make it harder eventually. And it might be a three-month class. It might be a six-month class. So once you get your license, you got your license. And what you could do with that being on the MLS, like if she told me her father's address, I promise you I could tell you so much about her father just from the MLS and about that property, when he bought it. I could probably get the phone number that and the email address off free off the MLS because of it. There's a way to do that. So And I could pull comps and I could find... Um, expired listings, all kinds of deal, talk with agents and things like that. So it's a really good thing. You yeah. Um, I, I, I said that, but I think. I, I'm not 100%. I know they've done that in um, some other states because it's so, it, because you, um, let me try to think. I'm trying to think how I want to word it. Right now, yeah. nationwide, if you want to get a real estate license, you can go on and take, take the test, but it's geared toward all the other states. That test and that training is so hard to get through, and it's because Michigan's requirements are so much less than other states. So I think it's just a matter of time before Michigan catches up with the rest of the country. And that's my opinion, yeah. and that's based upon. Yeah. Yeah, they, that's what they're talking about. Yeah, that's I know they've done it in a few states now, Illinois for sure. Um where at Pennsylvania? I think so, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, excuse me. So if I decided I'd like to get my license and jump on this, um, are there classes like locally and how much do they cost? Yeah, um, there is a few different. Um, Namir, Georgia, um, what was the real estate school? Michigan. Michigan Institute of Real Estate. On okay. Southfield Road. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's a couple more. I'm not sure of the cost. So and it's about four or five hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, it's super expensive. Yeah. Yes, sir. I got mine through uh, Real Estate One, and yeah. uh, this was a few years back, but uh -huh. at that time, Real Estate One, uh, they used to have 50% uh, off deals on Groupon all the time. I don't know if they still do that, but they used to have 50% off on Groupon, but when I got mine, it was uh, supposed to be 150 bucks, but I got it for $75, uh, plus I had to pay for the book. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then if you're going to wholesale and you have your real estate license, you got to find an investor-friendly real estate broker to work for, okay? I, I, you go to where I work at or there's other ones out there, okay? But, you know, and what else can you do for someone? You meet a, you meet a seller and you can't wholesale it. They want too much money or you're trying to solve their problem. You might be able to list that house for them and help them that way and make a commission, you know, traditional real estate. I'm listing, a, I, I got like two listings right now, and I'm working on another listing, right? So that's just some other way of, another stream of income. You want to look at it that way. And then when foreclosures start coming, you could get set up as a real estate agent with these banks, or your broker will, and then you'll get listings, and you can list the bank-owned homes and make a commission on there that's really easy to do, right? 
So a lot of different reasons why to get it. But um, the main reason in my mind is to have access to that MLS so you can figure out comps, real comps, of what a house is worth and what is not. And you can get all the information you need about that property or how much the taxes are and this and that. So a lot of good stuff uh, by being a real estate agent. Okay. So, all right. So, so that's a little bit about me. Like I said, six years ago, um, I quit my job, started on my own started doing flips. Now I am, I own a dumpster company. Um, I have like 15 rubber wheel dumpsters and I wholesale and I do like one, well like I'm working on two flips at a time. I still love flipping houses because I get them such a great price. I clean them up nice and I like, and I sell them and you know, I, I, I look for houses and I keep the ones that are great deals. Instead of wholesaling them, I keep them for myself. So that's what I like doing. Yes, sir. What's your telephone number? Yeah, my telephone number is 248-497-9195. Best to text me first. Um, and then once I know who you are and I lock you in my phone, I'll, it'll be a lot better. I get so many phone calls. <laughs> Yeah, and I got, yeah, exactly. I got a few different numbers. Like, I got my number on my back here, my 313 number, 329-7877. I give that out to all my buyers. I There's also so many services you can use. I use CallRail. I got about 10 numbers. But this number here, if I see this on my phone, I answer it because it's a buyer. They want to buy a house, you know. And, and then I lock in my buyers and things like that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, 100%. 248 um, 497 9195. Okay, so. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, alright, so, so now I'm flipping houses. I got a house in Commerce Township that I'm flipping. Uh, it's, it's a great one. And I'm looking, I was trying to make the call today. I'm trying to buy one in Ortonville. Um, great little deal. I got a pretty good crew. I want to keep busy. So that, that's going out. That's going really well. And eventually I want to own rental properties. You know, I want to own rentals. I used to own a bunch. I have one now. And, um, and I want to own rentals and, you know, I want to own another business somehow, someday, one day, you know, things like that. So, um, so, and remember, ask some questions like you guys been doing. I love it. I love the participation. Um, so I'm going to tell you t a couple of things about how to get your, since only a few people are actually wholesaling, how do you get your, you know, a few steps on getting your first deal? What I think. There's, you know, you could, I'm sure people go on Instagram and YouTube and see all this. You get all kinds of education. You could get lost in that education. So there's a way to get to get started, and and you're always and you can't. Everyone's mind's different. Some people are analytical. They got that engineer brain, you know, and they everything's got to have be perfect, you know, right? <laughs> I can see him shaking his head. Yeah, but sometimes in this in this you just gotta fail forward. You gotta do something. They don't know. When you're talking to a seller and you say something wrong, they don't know what you stutter. I stutter. I, I, I'm not a perfect speaker, obviously, <laughs> and, but I don't care. I'm just trying to be yourself, um, honest, you know, say, do what you say you're going to do and things like that. So, um, so I want to tell you a few ways to get, you know, to do it on a budget. A couple of guys back there. Is this your full time job? doing wholesaling no would you like it to be or is this yeah 100 percent. and who else was wholesaling back here just those two okay i thought i saw some all right perfect so every who has not heard of driving four dollars who has not heard of that before all right great so what driving four dollars is this is one a lead generation one way, I, I do drive for dollars. Or when you have an appointment, go early. Go 20 minutes early and drive the neighborhood. 
before the appointment or after the appointment, drive the neighborhood. And um, what, you, what are you looking for? You're looking for houses that have not been fixed up, you know, they're, they're neglected, high grass, um, bad roof, um, you know, it just looks, just looks like an ugly house. You could do some vacant houses, some boarded up houses, but it looks like it had no pride of ownership. That's what I was looking for. Those are the type of houses you're looking for. And what do you do? You write down, I got an app. You don't need an app, but I use um, Deal Machine. You heard of it? So what Deal Machine is, is an app, as I'm driving the neighborhood, it's tracking me so I don't go back through it again. But it pops up, like I see this house here. I'm looking at it. I see it. I click on it, and it gives me the person's name. It gives me a lot of details about the house. I could press a couple more buttons, and I could send that person the owner, the owner's uh, postcard right from there. I got like three prepaid, um, pre-made postcards that I send out, and it'll give me their phone number if I want it. And I could call them right there, or I could go walk up to the door and door knock it. Okay, so but. Or you just get it on a list. Once you press about, you get a hundred of them. You can you can download a list that will have all their names and everything else. And then you can skip trace it. What is skip tracing? Is when you find their phone number, their email addresses, their sites. BatchSkipTracing.com. You could go to Free People Search. You could go to Deal Machine. Um, White Pages Premium. I love that one. If you're doing one by one, that's a really good one. A lot of people forgot about that, and that's what I've been using, Batch, and that one is my favorites right now. If you're an agent, you can go on the MLS and get their information, get their phone number. A lot of times there's a way to do that. All right, so now you just created a, a leads of you got someone that might be motivated because they got a junky house, right? A house that's, you know, it could be a landlord, it could be an owner, and things like that. So you could call... And now, the good thing about this list is it might not be on one of the lists that you buy because you were actually there looking through this neighborhood. You know, they might not be in pre-foreclosure, but you do got an ugly house, okay? So I always try to do the driving for dollars every week, and um, I love that list. That's one of my favorite sources, and I work pre-foreclosures and foreclosures. So those are my lead generations, and then word of mouth. Dealing, um, people calling me to help them get their first deal, or to help them that they might be they they might not know Detroit, or I I do work in Flint, in Pontiac, in other cities they might not know about, or people out of state that are trying to wholesale here, and they they call me to help them. Yes, sir. Do you pay a finder's fee? Like if you found a property? Yeah. Yes. It's a great question. I do. So another person that is a, you find people like that, um, bird dogs we call them, right? A bird dog that will find you properties. You might pay him 500 bucks or whatever you work out, right? I use, I have about seven, maybe eight mail carriers that um, know every house in the, on the route. They know when someone's behind on their mortgage, when someone has an ugly house, when they got a tenant, when they got a squatter in the house, they know all the, on their neighborhood. When someone wants to sell their house, someone might have died, they know that, in the family. So they just, I just have them text me their address, and I skip trace it, and I give them, I'm, I make them happy when, when I get the deal. And they just, and then they tell their friends, and I keep doing it there. So you got mail carriers, are one of my favorites, and also garbage, people that um, pick up garbage, pest control, people that have a pest control business, they, they, they see houses that <laughs> have bugs, landlords or, or whatever, landlords are getting sick and tired because the tenant just moved out or something like that. So those are, those are good sources. Contractors are a good source because people say, oh, I don't want to put all this money into this house, and, they could, and they're always on this, you know, going around the houses they see. They talk to a lot of people and things like that. So those are a couple good ways of getting your first first um, deal, okay? But once you get their names and number, then what, right? You got to call them. You got to pick up the phone. You got to text them. 
You can mail them. There's all, you can put a note on the door. Okay, there's a, different ways of you could do it. My favorite and most effective way is calling. Okay, you call them, and, um, and we have some training. We have, you know, of when we made phone calls and things like that. But I just pick up the phone. You cannot, you got to remember, you cannot force someone to sell their house to you. You cannot force them, no matter what, right? So just keep that in mind. I just call them and tell them, I mean, I do it all different ways, and I've done it all different ways, but right now I think the best way is tell them that I work with a group of investors, and we're looking to buy um, three, four, five more properties by the end of the year. And we noticed your house there on Pearson Street. Um, we're looking to buy in that neighborhood. I was just reaching out to see if you're interested in a fast cash offer. That's it. And then... They're going to ask you a bunch of questions. Like, How'd you get my name? How'd you get my? You know, we. That's a great question. I just skip over it. I said my office gave me your information. Oh, I was driving in the area and it's public information, and I seen the house. I said, man, I want to own that house. <laughs> I hope they want to sell it to me, right? And just get them off the subject, start talking to them. Say, have you ever thought about it? Boom. So you're just trying to get that 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 interest, right? And you want to know a few things. If they say no, then I say, well, do you know, do you have any other properties that you might want to sell? No? Well, let me ask you one more question before I hang up. Do you have any friends, family that might need to sell for whatever reason? Okay? Um, things like that. So you're just trying to create that relationship and, and talking to them. All right. And that's um, pretty much it. So you get someone that might be interested, and then there's a whole process what you do after that. But that is, um, that's one thing. And you could text them. But when you do call people, um, I know the two guys back there, they, they made phone calls. I guess, do you, um, well, how many, do you call every day? Call and text? Okay. Yeah, so when I call somebody, I call it the, and you might have heard this before, and there, a lot of things that I'm saying, 99% of it, I heard it from a podcast or from my mentor or for a mastermind group I belong to. I heard it from somebody. It's not, I didn't create it, right? Um, have you heard of double tap before? All right, so that's the term. Double tap means you call, they don't answer, call them right back. They, they might answer. They might think it's urgent. They don't know who you are. Sometimes triple tap them and call them three times in a row without leaving a message. Okay? I call that triple tap. What's that? I just I call it. It goes to voicemail. I hang up. I hit redial. A lot of times they'll pick up like, hello. They think it's urgent. They're curious now that who's this calling me, right? And And... You can leave a voice message and say, hi, Mrs. Jones, my name's Todd. This is what I used to say. My name's Todd. Um, I'm looking to buy another property in the next, you know, two, three, four weeks. I was just reaching out about your property. I don't really say the street on the cell phone because I might not have the right number, right? I'm reaching out to, to see if you might be interested in selling. Give me a call back and I'll say my number. Don't leave that message. You just told them everything you want to talk to them about. They might, right? I would say, hey, hey, ma'am, how you doing? My name's Todd. I'm calling regarding your property. I have a property right down the street. I want to tell you about, and I hang up. It's like a cliffhanger voicemail. I want to tell you, now they're going to call you because they want to hear what you have to say. What, you know, so either don't leave a message or leave like a cliffhanger, like you got cut off, Right? And, and you, you'll get a call back. And then you can send them a text message after a while. You, you know, and then follow-ups are very, very important. What does the follow-up mean? You go back and you, you go through these again and again and again until you reach them. And I, I, never, I keep them in my system until they tell me to F you. <laughs> Don't call me ever again. I sold the house. Or, I, you know, if someone tells me, they're closing in two weeks, uh, or they got it. They got it taken care of. I go, what? What happened? Oh, we're gonna. We, we sold it. I said, did you close yet? No, not yet. When do you expect to close? We we're supposed to close in two weeks. Okay. Is it okay if I, what day? They tell me the day. I said, I just got a lot of information. And I said, okay. Well, can I call you Friday just to make sure everything went okay? 
Because it could be another wholesaler who doesn't have a buyer. I could call Friday and say, hey, sir, did you, get, did you close? And they say, no. Or if they say yes, I say, well, congratulations, I'm happy for you. If they, and if they say no, then I say, well, what happened? I get into it, and I said, and then I might get the deal right then and there. So always follow up, trying to talk to people. And, and if you treat them right and you do what you say you're going to do, they're going to be another great source of leads. They're going to find people. They're going to know people. You're going to say, look, I'll give you $500 if I, get a di if I buy a house from somebody. Oh, what? Okay. You know, they love it. It's like free, free money to them. So that's a, that's a great, um, you know, some great things to do with that. So that's, um, and then anytime, tell me about the time, like if I'm running. I know we got plenty of time, but. Okay, so another way of getting, or something I think that's really important. Yes, sir. That's a great question. When you say this market, like the last thirty days. Yeah, it's been tough, isn't it? Buyers. Oh, really? No, sellers really. I mean, sellers still think their house is worth what it was four, five, six months ago. But buyers are scared right now, in my opinion. Um, a lot of them. They're either waiting for a crash or, you know, or they're um, just tighten, it, tighten right up, you know, regarding flips and rentals. Unless you just got the sweetest deal in the world. So I'm going to give a few tips on, you know, sellers, it's pretty easy to talk, tell them. You got you to gotta explain to them of what's going on in the market. You got to prep them before you give them an offer or anything else. You know, you know, something I go, man, four months ago, I would have been at your house signing this contract at that price. But right now, it's not like that, unfortunately. You know, it, things have changed, you know. And, and then you can blame, I used to blame everything on COVID. Now that's over. Now I'm blaming it on the interest rates raising and things like that. So, yeah, that's a really good question. Yes, sir. And plus, I think one thing that helps in that regard is there are so many articles, almost something every day, about how the housing market is slowing up. So yeah. Just reference some of those. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So, yeah. What I so now we gotta get a little more creative, and um, you know, you might have to get a deal. Like I just, I got a couple of deals that I couldn't sell um, because they're kind of messy frame houses. They're pretty cheap though. So I went back to the, the, the seller, and, and I pretty much said, look, and I explained why. I said, sorry. I said, you know, my partners, they're just, I don't know what's going on. You know, they did this last year. You know, when COVID first started, they did this, and then we got back on track, and now they're, they're a little scared right now that they want to see what's going to happen with the market. But here's what I can do. Um, and see if this might work for you. And then I might offer them, let's say I was going to pay ten grand for the house. I said, what if I gave you $3,000 now and paid you 400 a month for the next 10 months? By then I'll have it all figured out and have the house fixed up. I'll be doing what I need to be doing and, and I'll pay you off the balance. So now I'm trying to get it in a seller financing type of deal. So what good, and let's say this house I got for 10, I was selling it for 20. So now I could go and wholesale that house for um, ten grand down, and they'll pay four hundred. They'll pay four hundred a month, and then they'll balloon it out at the end. So they'll just step in my shoes, or I'll keep it myself, right? Something like that. So it's just got a little bit of creative, but I don't want to get too much into that and confuse some people, you know. But um, so another important thing is um, is going to meetups. Okay, going to meetups, um, we have probably five, six, seven meetups in this area. You know, they got one in Southfield, Renegade, Detroit. There's one in Troy, um, MERI meetup. And there's one in the east side, Eric Monzo, um, a title company, um, Detroit title and escrow. Emma is one of the owners there. She runs a meetup. Once a month, once every other month, she has some nice um, get-togethers, and um, we have our meetup. 
in Ann Arbor, has, Ypsilanti, they have one. So there's meetups not really that far. And when I go to the meetups, um, this is a different style because we're trying to, we're teaching it and things like that. These other meetups, you might be able to pitch your property. Um, you might tell people who you are. You get to talk to buyers, other wholesalers, and things like that. So my suggestion, or what I try to tell you to do, is to be loud. You know, don't, don't just sit there and, you know, at those type of meetups and just take it in. I mean, I, I bring a bandit sign, and it says, Todd, TC Deals, has my phone number. And I get up to the camera, and I'll say, wholesale, wholesale, wholesale. If you want to get on my buyer's list, call me. I got deals. I might pitch out deals. And I get excited about it and things like that. So you want people to come to you. You want them to, you know, you don't necessarily, I don't have business cards. If you ask me for a business card, I'm going to ask you for your phone number. And then I'm going to, I don't know, let me send you a text message. Now I could send you a text message with my name and number. I could get your name and number, put it in the text message and all this good stuff, put you, add you to my phone and get you on my buyer's list. Find out where you like, where you like to buy. Keep track of that. Things like that. So you're trying to meet people and find out what they're doing. You might meet another wholesaler that you may. Well, let's get together. Let's make some phone calls together. We, I've done that plenty of times. You figure out once a week, every other day, one, every day. You, 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 you make phone calls together. You don't have to be partners, but it's good to be in the same room with those people, making phone calls, calling people. You'll hear him say something or her say something that sounds good to you, and you say, I'm going to try that. Or they might hear something that sounds good, to, good you know, that you say. Yes? Well, what is your rationale for not uh, having business cards? Is that because you want to use the business card and put it away, never contact you, so therefore you're close with them first? You're getting their phone number. Yep. You can initiate the personal contact. Yeah, 100%. I have a stack of business. And by the time you leave that place, I mean, maybe not you, but for me, if I have a stack of business cards, the next morning I go in my wallet or my pocket and it's on my table, I won't remember any of it. I have to have it in something else. You know, I used to, I lose the business cards. I never call them. I, I forget you know, it's not, or when I need it a week later, I have no idea. I, oh, who is that, you know? So I try to keep, I keep a buyer's list, and I keep a buyer's list. I mean, if you give me a deal in um, whatever city, St. Clair Shores, I could go in my buyer's list and type in St. Clair Shores, and I'll get 25 people that buy in that area or more, you know. I keep it by... This is what I like when you when people would talk about hashtags, right? Uh, I'm an old man. I didn't know what that meant, you know. But I do do hashtags for buyers where I hashtag Detroit Rental, Detroit Flip, Detroit This, um, Royal Oak Flip, Royal Oak This. I put in all the cities: Oakland County, Wayne County, Macomb County. So if I get a property in that area, I'll type in those. I'll pull everyone that likes Wayne County or Detroit Flips, everyone that likes um, whatever I'm looking for, whatever, whatever I'm trying to sell. And then I blast it out to them. I email blast it and I text blast it. And just like, just like that. So, um, yes. I know that you mentioned Detroit quite a bit and you mentioned Flint. So am I correct in assuming that's where the user market is trying to find houses? That's a great question. Um, Detroit, I know Detroit like the back of my hand. And, um, and I used to buy at the foreclosure auction with my old company. And we managed over, we not managed, the company I worked for owed, owned 120 Detroit properties. And that's where we did our home improvement. That was their home base, you know, was Detroit. So I know Detroit. I know the zip codes. And in Flint, when I first started off at the foreclosure auctions on my own, I would go to the foreclosure auctions in Flint in Genesee County every Wednesday. And I was buying houses because I didn't have a lot of money. I was getting them for a dollar. I was getting them for a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. And so I know those areas. And um, you could get more 
houses in, that I think of in Detroit and Flint because in um, the suburbs, there's more, com in my mind, there's a lot of competition there, you know, for people are working foreclosures, pre-foreclosures. They will all want to do, you know, they all want to do maybe flips there and things like that. And that could be a little off on that. Some people, I know a ton of people that won't work like Detroit. And I just know it really, really well. Like South, just like Southwest Detroit and downtown Detroit. And downtown is huge. I don't do a lot of business there. And I, now I love Southwest Detroit. But the company I worked for before, we didn't do business in Southwest Detroit for whatever the reason was. We just stuck to like anything going through eight mile to six mile all the way from the east side to the west side and 48219, 48224, things like that. But um, yeah, so meetups, that, that, that's, I really, I really think on the meetups is, is where I've, I know a lot of people, I've met a lot of buyers, um, private money lenders, you know, that I used to fund my fix and flips for me, you know, and uh, partners where I partner up with people and we did fix and flips together and, and things like that. So I think that's really important, you know. Um, all right, so another thing, I, I think the third step of getting your first deal, like I said, you could fail forward and do all this yourself, um, and sometimes you might, well, not most, most of the time, some people get in analysis per analysis where you're just watching YouTube. You're watching different videos, and you're hearing this stuff all the time. And, oh, deal machine, I got to get that. I got to get prop stream. Oh, I got to get batch skip tracing. I got to get a dialer. What dialer do I get? I got to do mass texting. I just said like five different things, and they each could be 100 bucks a month, right? Oh, I got to get a CRM. I, I, I fell in the trap. I had a CRM. It cost me $5,000 to get this CRM. Is the best of the best. It is the best of the best. But my mind is, I don't need a CRM that's the best of the best because I ain't going to use it to its fullest. I don't have time for it. So I wasted $5,000, okay? Oh, good question. It's a customer relationship manager, I think it's called, right? And what it is is it keeps all your deals in there. You could put their names, address, phone numbers. Um, you could do purchase. Some of them you could do a purchase agreement out of there. You just click a couple buttons. It keeps track of what things are. When, if it's active or if you closed on it, you can put documents in it. it just, it's a system to keep all your business in there, leads in there, so people could call it. And if, and if, and if I want to go through all my old leads or my follow-ups, boom, I just click a couple buttons. I see them all there. I start making phone calls. Sometimes you could call right from there. And so... I use a free version of Podio, P-O-D-I-O. -O. It's really easy. It keeps track of my stuff. That's it. Some people use an Excel sheet, right? So, so you, you could get caught up in all this stuff of, 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 of spending a lot of money. And I was caught up in that where I had a lot of different things that I, haven't, I didn't use. So I finally just took a look of everything I'm spending and, and pretty much only kept what I really needed, got rid of everything else, and I'm not buy I won't buy something like that unless it's, you know, something I'm going to use every day. Yes? Uh, do you virtual wholesale a lot, or do you say local? Um, I'm 90 percent, probably 90, 95 percent um, local, but I, I am doing more throughout Michigan, all of Michigan. I'm pre four. I just wrote one in North Branch, of, um, which is, yeah, exactly. Me neither. It's an hour. I just checked. It's an hour and forty minutes away from here. If you know where um, Davidson, Michigan, it's even further. Past Clarkston, past Davidson, out that way. So I got a nice deal out there. So, um, yes, sir. Is it necessary to get a LLC before your first deal? Nope. 
I know a guy who's a killer wholesaler. He's been, he's an older guy, and he's been doing it for 30 years. And he's never, he don't have an LLC. Everything's in his personal name. What is the LLC? Limited Liability Corporation. 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 Yeah. yeah, so like if you have a business, like let's say you have a dumpster company, it might be Joe Smith's LLC or a home improvement company, Handy Andy LLC. Yeah, so I have a, I have TC Deals LLC, Michigan Home Solutions LLC. I have TC Dumpsters LLC, Jensen's Properties LLC. I have a quite, I and I have like six or seven more that it's not necessary. But I do like like one of my callers, my that might call as Jensen's Properties LLC, and then I have later on we might call as Michigan Home Solutions LLC. So I'm kind of going after them a couple of different ways, different voices, different people, different company names. So, yes, sir. So basically what an LLC does, like in the name, it limits your liability. So like, uh, let's say this restaurant was in a, was in a liability LLC, you slip and fall, you go to sue, you can't take the owner's personal assets, you can only take it to the name of the LLC. So that's a way of limiting your liability. Yeah, good question. Yeah, I should have. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Yeah, so that's why you you might you'll have the LLC, so you could get you're, you're protected in a way. You might want to talk to you. You gotta do it. You gotta do everything the right way, else they could come after you anyway. You know. But um, um, so so what I was saying is, you know, so the third step, in my opinion, is finding a mentor. Okay. Uh, Mark and I just started a mentoring program, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, okay? Because this is um, a mentoring program that, that I'm doing, and I'm pretty much is I could show you everything about wholesaling. As you, you know, live, you know, as you're doing something, if you're making a phone call. Yes, sir. <laughs> but that's a lot of problems. Yes, buyers, and in the last two months, or really 30 days, 45 days, it's gotten a lot harder with buyers, in my opinion. And I talk to a lot of wholesalers um, that have been doing this a long time, and they're, doing, they're coming up with the same, the same thing. So what do we do? we got to figure out what, you know, get better buyers. I go for buyers out of state that want to create a rental portfolio, a lot of them want to do flips. I mean, people who do virtually, do virtual flipping, okay? And another thing that I've been doing lately, like I locked one of Mark's up today, never been to the house. So we're, we're doing virtual wholesaling to a sense. We're just not doing it from here to Atlanta, Georgia, or, you know, somewhere like that. But it, I always try to get the deal done over the phone. Um, and get a deal signed, order the title. I'll worry about going to look at the house later or have someone or hire someone to go look at the house and take pictures for me or whatever I need to do, okay? Because the faster you get the deal, the faster it's locked, locked in. You go order tighter work, you can get moving. Now, if I go to the house and it's not what they told me it was, it's not as, oh, you, you told me this house needed nothing and there's a hole in the ceiling, now I can renegotiate the contract. Right, I got a reason to renegotiate it. All right, so and you know, so virtual wholesaling to a sense, you know, that's that's what I'm trying to do. But it's nice to be able to ha drive there, like the one in North Branch, um, <laughs> and we're, we solve problems. The lady lost her leg; um, she can't afford the property. She's going to foreclosure. So we locked it up, and I did addendum the purchase agreement because what it, I found out her problem, her biggest problem, she has a wheelchair ramp, a wooden one, that needs to be moved to her mom and dad's house. So on there for free, we're gonna, I'm gonna hire, bring my guy out, and we're gonna disassemble a wheelchair ramp and install it at her mom and dad's house for her. Think of that, you know, you gotta figure out what the problem is. You know, you don't, I'm not gonna charge her anything. You know, do I want to do it? Oh, well, I'm not going to do it, so I don't care. <laughs> you know, I, I don't do the, you, she don't want me to 
take that thing apart. She would never be able to use it again. I promise you that. So, um, but so with the our mentoring program that we're doing, the key. There's a lot of keys, but two of the keys. We're going to have um, two phone group sessions. Why are we having group sessions? Because if I have 20 people in a in in a mentoring program, I cannot do 20 one-on-ones in a week. Okay, so in a group session, though, you could get on a, a Zoom call, and we could talk about your business and whatever we're talking about might help this person over here, or they might have some insight and things like that. So we could. It's always good to be in a group, you know. And I belong to another a high level mentoring group, and that's how we do it. We have a um, two hour long group sessions, um, and I help you not just helping you get the lead, um, talking to customers. We're going to do, we'll be doing a lot of group um, making phone calls, you know, together, either on Zoom or we'll go to a location and we'll record it things like that. So I can hear you say something, you can hear me say something, and sometimes I'll just grab the phone with your permission from him and I'll start talking, you know, and try to lock that deal down. Yes. No, that's a great question. Um, that's a group that I belong to. It's like um, people that are doing higher level creative financing um, um, a group that I actually belong to. That's this. This is no, 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 no. Yeah, it's definitely not because I belong to the people that are in it are big time. You know, they have big businesses, and I go in a room like that so I could learn from guys that that's where I would like to be at. And you know, it costs a pretty penny. You know. To be in a group like that, you know, stuff like that. But no, definitely, it's not because I'm in it, I, I don't think. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, are you charging for your mentoring? Yes, I'm gonna, we're going to go over that too. And how long is this meeting going for? This meeting here, probably another 20 minutes. Okay. Yep, absolutely. But So also in the mentoring group, so we have the group sessions there. We're talking about leads. What do you get after you get a lead? Purchase agreements. Um, I share all my documents and I tell you why, why I have this in my purchase agreement, why I don't have it, um, and, and then assignment agreements. What do, you, what do you do after you get it under contract so I can help you in every aspect, you know, ordering the title work, um, transaction coordinating, searching for the buyers, how do you if you, it's just not even searching for a buyer, if you get a deal on a contract and now you got five buyers that want to see the house, how do you handle that at the house showing five buyers with the seller there? How do you do that without peop, buyers talking to the sellers, sellers asking why are these people in my house? There's a, there's a method of doing it and how to do it. And, and then and once you get a buyer, you got three people that want it. What do you do there? Then you got to do an assignment agreement. And, and then you got to transaction coordinate it. And you got to look at the title work and see what, why, what, why is this person on there? Why is this person not on there? So there's all different things that pop up in the middle of it. I've been through probably all of it. And then what do you do at closing? Why do you, why do you, have, the sell, why do you have the seller close first? And the buyer in this room closing over there, and they don't. We don't put them together. You know, there's reasons for all this. So I teach you that, help you with it, and the object is be consistent. How if if you've never done a deal, how can you get your first deal? Okay. If you've done one deal consistently every month, how can you do two deals consistently every month? Then how can you do three deals consistently, four deals, and grow where you want to grow, right? And um, our mentoring program, when we were thinking about it, it's probably going to be a lot more money once I get quite a few people in there because the higher, then I could raise the price and keep it kind of medium, small. Um, the price, I think, Mark, is 395 
a month, okay, is how much this mentoring program is. And it is, um, I'll be honest with you, when I was brand new, I wish I had somewhere local that had a mentoring program, you know. Instead of the fan mural that was $30,000 a year, you know, this, what's that? Yes, yeah. Yep, they, and then I think it's way more now. That was six years ago, seven, yeah, six years ago. You know, and it's probably 50000 And also we're going to do special things, meaning you could come, you know, you could come on appointments with me. You could work for, with me for a day if you want, if you trust my driving. You could go to the foreclosure auction with me. Um, my flips, you could go to the flip. I could kind of tell you the whole story of the flip, walk through it, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it why I'm not doing it, answer the questions, how much I got it for, how much I'm going to sell it for, and how much money, why this contractor, that contractor, why do I use this material, so many different things. I know everything about rentals. I used to manage rentals. Um, how you can hide the price from the buyer on what you're making yeah. without having a problem, how to do a double close. No, you can hide it without double closing it. Yep with your assignment agreement. They do not know what I bought that property for. I don't tell them. They'll know at closing, the buyer will. The seller will never know, but the buyer will know at closing. I hide it from them. There's a way of doing it. I don't want to tell you until you're in my program. <laughs> I did used to give all this information for free, but I'll be honest with you, I get so many people. Now it's like, Ten people call me, I might talk to one or two of them, and I'm giving them free information. These people I just don't have time for. So now I'm trying to say, look, if someone, I get people all day, another guy today, I told him to come here today, and he hasn't been here. He goes, can I call you time and time? Can I, can you help me with this? Can we have coffee? I'm saying, I'm working. I can't have coffee. I don't eat. Well, I eat at night when I'm not supposed to. But, so instead of that, I said, well, Mark, let's do a mentoring group. So now I could pour into the people like my team, our team, whatever you want to call it. And we could, uh, nothing would make me happier is to see, and I do have a handful of people over the years, um, and you guys might meet them, that I've trained. Carson Demick is a 22-year-old. When he was 19 years old, never, I went on his first car. We was at a boiler room. The kid is crushing it. He's driving. It don't matter what you're driving. You know, uh, trust me. And he realizes it now. But he's driving a McLaren, you know, with a $190,000 car. And I just talked to him the other day. He said, eh, I'm done with that. I'm, I, that that's not him. And what is his, his mission? He says, really, I like helping people. He's, you know, 22-year-old, 19 years old. He is crushing it. And... Not because of me. It's a hard worker, but I had I did help him in the beginning. I got him started. He even tell you know tell tell me that, ago? huh? Five years ago. He's twenty two years old now, so not even yeah, not even yeah three three. I mean, crushing it, crushing it. Yeah, that's the very first deal that we went on together. Yeah, it's a great story. But and um and then other local people and. And that part is, I just like seeing, because we talk, you know, we, we're friends. We, I might need something from them. They need something from me. We help each other out. We do deals together. We do flips together and, and things like that. What's the benefit uh, for the seller to be the wholesaler versus the real estate agent? That's a great question. Um, because a real estate agent, a lot of times... They want a perfect house. They want a perfect house. Or you might have a tenant that won't, you can't walk through there and show people the house all the time. Or there's a, there's a situation um, that it just doesn't work. And a commission on a $50,000 deal for a real estate agent is not, it's more work or the same amount of work than it is if you sell a $200,000 deal, except for the money-wise. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. 
Were you here when I mentioned about the first house I wholesaled? I had to deal with Todd had the buyer. Mm -hmm. That house, it was a hoarder house. Mm -hmm. From floor to ceiling, there was stuff. Bags and bags and bags of stuff. It had it upstairs. You had to walk over the bags of stuff to get up the stairs. It yeah. had holes in the roof. It need, that house needed everything. No, self, right oh, yeah, hang on, hang on. no self respecting real estate agent was going to list that house. And like Todd said, like I, I mentioned, I got under contract for $16,000. Well, no self respecting real estate agent is going to put that house under contract looking like that for $16,000 because for the amount of work, uh, it just wasn't worth it. You got under contract too high, it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I did, because I told him at the last meeting, Derek was the first person I brought up. Derek, yeah. you, got, you paid too much for this. Yeah. So, but, um, yes, that's, yeah, so that, yeah, that's probably the reason, you know, in my, my opinion. And some people don't want people trampling through their house anymore, you know. Close anything yet? Oh, selling? <laughs> That's why you need to measure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, sometimes, you know, some people get lucky and they get a deal right away. Some people it takes them six months, nine months, two months. But if you're doing it all yourself, it's going to take you longer, you know, in my opinion. But whatever, don't give up because it'll change your life. Just think if you can make an extra. Ten grand a month every month, and then you do one more deal, and now you're making twenty deal, twenty grand a month. So we put a band it's a huge month numbers. Flint, Michigan, and we got a call off of it for a four unit in Oxford. Her lady wanted. We offered her sixty. She said she wanted seventy. No, she goes. I'll take between sixty and eighty. Yeah, and we said, with seventy work, she said yes. She's a don't want her. She didn't want to list it. It'll, it'll retail three fifty. Yeah, so that's a. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, we're gonna buy it and then sell it because it's that good of a deal. Yeah, we already have a wholesale buyer that would be. Yeah, we got someone that'll pay two fifty like that, but we're probably just gonna list it for it. Okay, so follow <laughs> So if you sign up, I'll show you how to work bandit signs like you never Yeah, Mark yeah, Mark does a big thing of bandit signs and Google mapping and things yeah, like that. Google maps. And then the marketers, so those are the best leads when somebody calls on a Google map location. That's where you go and you Google I want cash for my house, and your map pops to the top. Yeah. When one of those calls, you've got a motivated seller. Yeah. When someone calls you wanting to sell a house, is a better lead than you calling them, for sure. Yep, yep, yep. But you could, you could do it a couple of different ways. You could wait for the phone to ring, or you could make the phone ring. You know, yeah. you could make the phone ring. I'm the guy, kind of guy that wants to do that. He, ma he, waits, he, he gets the phone to ring. I call people. So it works out well together. So, any questions about the mentoring program? If not, I'll come right here, line up, single file line, <laughs> let's get going. <laughs> no, I'd, I would love to work with every, everyone, but um, yeah, I mean, wholesaling could definitely change your life. And it's like a stepping stone, you know, just because. I kind of, I'm weird. I'm definitely weird. I think I'm going to wholesale forever. But there's people that wholesale, they, maybe they wholesale 10 deals, and then they go and buy one deal the next time they get a deal. And then they do another 10 deals and they buy one. So they're creating a rental portfolio. You know, they're building wealth instead of become, making money. Wholesaling's a job, but it's a job. I was able to take my mom to the doctors today, you know, for three or four hours. If I don't want to work tomorrow, I won't work. But I'm working all the time, unless uh, you know. But you could work around your schedule. It, you work for yourself. But it's a it's a job. It's a you know if you if you don't work at it, you don't pick up that phone call or pick up the phone. It's you're not. It's going to be tough. But there's programs. You know, I could teach you how to 
step out of your business and have a team of people doing this for you, okay? And I've always wanted to do it myself, but I am gradually getting that way. I want to do things that I'm doing right here, right now. Talking to people, teaching people, and then talking to buyers and doing that really, really well. That's the best part. While I got two guys over here making phone calls all day long for me. And then I got a VA from the Philippines that's really good. I pay him eight bucks an hour, which is a lot of money in the Philippines. You could get VAs for three, four bucks an hour. I pay him eight bucks an hour because he's that good. He could even write a deal over the phone. So I got three guys. Yeah, they're all guys. <laughs> I did have a transaction coordinator from the Philippines. But the, that's, that's my team right now, and I could see me getting a couple of more. And they are going to, I'm going to teach them everything that I know, and they're going to be able to write contracts over the phone, at the house, whatever they want to do. And I'm going to let them make mistakes so we can learn from them and put systems in place so it don't happen again. I'm not going to get mad at them. And I want them to make a lot of money because if they make a lot of money, guess who else makes a lot of money? Right here. So I want them to make a lot of money, a lot. I, I pay them well if they get deals. And you could, some people pay people 5%, 10% of the deal. I want to pay them more than that, way more. And they get deals, I'm happy. Now I'm creating a system where I can step out of my business and do what, help them and train and, and do more things. So never had that mindset before. I always wanted to do it all myself, right, Mark? Yeah. And Mark gives me 40 leads. Mark, I got it. I'm going to call them out. How am I calling 40 leads in 48 hours? It's impossible because I got other things I'm doing too. But now I got a team that could call 100 leads each a day. That's 300 calls a day. So even if they do 80% of what I could do, you know, it, yeah, it's work. Yes, sir. Word of mouth. There's ways you can find them and everything else, but word of mouth. Someone in the business came working for me, came with a VA that I was friends with, the guy. I was friends with the guy, and he goes, I got a VA, I can't. And so, boom, I said, let's do it. And it was that easy. And the VA could recruit other people in the business from the Philippines. When I need it, I'll have him find another good one. You know. Yes. No. I have for many, many years. They're good. I love them over there. Davin, Davin Parnell, Emma, they know me. Yeah, they know, all know me really well. I use a different title company. I use Speedy Title and Escrow because they are my trans. I got a girl there that's transaction coordinate all my deals for me. She she goes to mobile closings. She does. They're in they're in Clinton Township, but she goes everywhere to close. She'll go to Detroit. She goes locally to the person's house. Speedy title and escrow. Just contact me. I'll set you up with my girl. It'll take care of you. All right. If you're in the mentoring program. <laughs> it is three ninety five a month. So almost a hundred bucks a week, and my goal is you to make you gotta make we gotta make money so you get that that's like a drop in the bucket. So get rid of prop stream, get rid of your CRM, save that five or six hundred dollars you're wasting, and spend it on the four ninety five mentoring pro or three ninety five mentoring program. Yeah, thirty day notice. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes uh, we had a mentoring program, right? Yeah. I used me and Mark had one. Yeah, that's how he got started. Right, it was uh, a few years back, and uh, I don't know where I got that email from. Somebody saw the email about a meeting that you two were having. You announced the meeting mentoring yeah. program. I signed up, and uh, like you said, I went to the auction with you. I rode in the car yeah. with you. But, but watch this. On, hang on, I went on, went on, went on deals with you. Um, yeah. And between the two of them, I can't think of a real estate question that you could ask if either one of those guys wouldn't be able to answer. I mean, between the two of them. So, 
That's yeah. My, that's my respect. What? Do we do deals together? A bunch. Do I give you deals to list? Yeah. yeah, he got his real estate license. He's, he's that's, definitely. That's why you want to get with the team. Yeah. Because I'm making money, but I'm not. Remember, I'm stuck in my bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> but I got the lead. Right, so I got the motivated stuff. Yeah. If you've got a bad deal put together, like I got a bad deal put together this week, I called Todd. I told her, call the lady up right now. I'm telling her I can't do it. It's too much money. It won't work. And then so I said, I got this only guy I know will buy a prior property, this guy named Todd. And I'll have him call him. So now he can renegotiate the deal. Not once. Yeah. We just were trying to pay too much for it. Yeah. So, yep, yep. Yeah, so, yeah, the mentoring program that we did was a little, kind of like what we're doing now. It was a little bit different, but I, I like the, the, the way this, this, the one that we came up with. I really think it's a lot of, all the, oh, and we have a private Facebook group. I didn't mention that. So we get asked questions and do all kinds of things through that. There's all kinds of things. And, and yeah, and all the meeting, and if there's anything you want to know about, I might tell you, you know, one on one, and then I might do a video on it. So we put it in the Facebook group for everyone else. So I do a lot of Zoom videos and showing my screen how to count properties um, and and things like that. But um, the the one thing is, I'll just tell you another thing. I picked up the top. So I we tied up a property. This guy's got another wholesaler that comes in and wants to buy. It. Well, we knew exactly squirrely on this. So in our purchase agreement, it's just the right to file a claim of interest against the property. File the claim of interest. Now, we can't sell it because we dumped up the title. And we did it with a written contract with him. So we picked up $3,300 today. And, you know, I, the guy was supposed to bring me the money to my house. But, uh, you see... Yeah, you. Who who? Ha yeah, yeah. Who hasn't heard of a claim of interest? You haven't. Okay. So a claim of interest. It says in my purchase agreement because if it doesn't say it, you can't do it. It says um, I have the right to register a claim of interest at the county that the property is in. In the the claim of interest puts a lien on the property because we have a contract that says I'm going to buy it. So just because the seller changes their mind or, or someone offers them more money, it's, they, they can't just go and sell their house. Just like any traditional real estate deal, you can't do that. You, know, you sign paperwork. So you have a claim of interest, and then not only do I just file it, I then send it to Detroit Title and Escrow to let them know that I have a claim of interest and speedy title and all these 10 other title companies that people use as wholesalers because another wholesaler went and offered more money. So now everyone's on notice that I have a claim of interest on there. I have the deal under contract and the title companies won't close the deal. And if they are going to close the deal or they see my claim of interest, they call me up and they say, Todd, this deal's ready to close. I said, really? And then they said, but can you sign a release on this property? I said, no. I was going to buy this house. How about I buy it for the ten grand that I had it locked up with? No, no, no. I said, how much do you need to, to release it? How about 5000 And I get $5,000, they release it, and the seller got more money than what they thought. They're happy. And the wholesaler still made money. Because they probably sold it for a lot of money, which I was going to sell it for more money. But I'm happy with five grand out of the blue. It's a, the the claim of interest is separate. It's separate, but you fill it out yourself. The seller the seller doesn't need to fill it out. But on my purchase agreement, it says I can file a claim of interest. They've agreed to it by contract on the purchase. Some people. And it costs 18 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that to yeah. file it. And then when it needs to get paid, you know, you get the price. Yeah. Yeah. We said 3300 <laughs> You want to make it enough so they don't fight it? 